Okay, in that case, let us begin. So, tell me what exactly was your questions for this match? So, um, this match I, I started playing after a small break and this game I'm up against Sniper mid. Um, I know I need to uh, play safe till uh, level 6 and then I can probably uh, be aggressive. I'm looking to farm my Orchid first. My questions this game are around my movements around the early to mid game and uh, looking for feedback on my farming patterns. Um, I have more questions but we can uh, probably come to them uh, later in the game. Yeah, that's fine. So tell me how you're planning to approach this sniper lane exactly yeah uh play cautiously or uh, like don't get bullied out of the lane uh i right now i'm just looking to farm my orchid so i just want to maximize my my farm and get my orchid as fast as possible and then once i have that i can probably look to make kills unless the sniper uh, makes mistakes uh, enough for me to capitalize on that Okay, so the first thing we see is that the sniper never leaves this little line behind his range creep. And what that could tell you is that he probably will not attempt to contest the deny on your range creep. And as, as we watch forward, we can see the shrapnel ticking down on the range creep and the sniper hasn't moved an inch. And that should be your clue to start right clicking the range creep as soon as possible and it should be pretty easy to time it for a nice clean deny. Which in the end did happen but by the time you did that the sniper has already pushed forward with all the creeps. So this situation was a little bit more risky but if we watch this again the shrapnel there is no way he could have reached in time to prevent your deny way earlier so my point is if you if you notice creeps being in the deniable range or going to be soon in the deniable range just go ahead and help them with a few right clicks yeah um i i do uh i did have that on my mind uh i mean i just didn't want sniper to change his uh, target and actually start hitting the range creep first yeah it's it's like you said you you might want to see if sniper makes mistakes and that's a very good mindset you will always want to see if a player somehow is unfamiliar with the matchup especially at lower mmrs people are often clueless how to play certain matchups so if you if you notice a pattern like right now sniper putting shrapnel and not caring about what happens with the creeps under the shrapnel, that is a sign that Sniper is unfamiliar with that aspect, the fact that you can start aggressively denying. So if you see this pattern and, and, and other patterns you can exploit, you should definitely keep them in mind for the rest of the matchup and try to exploit them. And again, exactly the same pattern. He just sits on his high ground and lets the shrapnel do the job. So there's two ways for you to play. You can, you can of course, uh, do this, the thing I said before. Keep an eye on the range creep's health. And try to deny it. Or you can go aggressively on the sniper. Who, as you have seen, only shrapnels your side of the wave. So instead of moving back and missing a lot of creeps because now you're focused on the range one and the enemy creeps are unreachable you can instead move forward 
and right click sniper with your level 2 advantage. T the sniper doesn't have any extra region, no no self. You know sniper isn't gonna build battle. So at this situ at this moment you know that whatever trade you do, you'll have battle coming up soon. While he will have to send ship out a self. So whatever trade you do, you should be economically on top. And one more thing is that I'm gonna ask you this question. Uh, when does the sniper, or let me rephrase, when is sniper's shrapnel wasted? When he probably uh, uses uses it on a creep wave and still does not get the range creep. Well, this part of course, but I, I was more thinking in lines of if the creeps are moving all the time, he does not have a static lane, and the shrapnel oh, yeah. he does, creeps will move out of the way. Absolutely. So another, another way you can play this lane is to simply keep them creeps moving, bouncing between waves, especially against this matchup. Uh, but the first wave and the second wave, we have seen Sniper is extremely passive and you yourself are extremely passive. But the difference is, Sniper has no other choice but to be passive because you cannot push waves effectively, while you, you can dictate how the creeps are moving. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I, this, this match was from a week ago. I think I tried to keep the wave bouncing. Uh, let's see. And again, really passive on that denying. It worked out, but again, when you get to better players, they will be way more conscious about what's happening right there, right then and there. That was a missed opportunity to body block for a better creep positioning. Again, Sniper does exactly the same pattern. You should start hitting the range creep as soon as possible. This is the most glaring mistake uh, at the lower MMR ranges I'm seeing. Both players are extremely passive. As long as you're the one being aggressive, you're already, you would be already on your way to winning the lane because the opponent simply will not know how to respond to that because he haven't seen this behavior from other mids. So now if we scroll back to this moment, your ideal play would be to block the creeps a little and then move out, stack this camp, return to the creep wave. Of course Sniper Sniper will still do the shrapnel because that's all he does, that's all he knows how to do. So by the time you return you can easily deny the range creep, push out the wave, we return here and enjoy a nice double stack. Like I said, you will try to keep the waves bouncing, but it wasn't because you decided to keep the waves bouncing, it was only because the sniper has left the lane. If he was still in the lane, still doing the shrapnel thingy, I don't think he would have managed to keep the waves bouncing. So, so that's why I, was, I, why I was telling you how exactly to keep the waves bouncing. Well, I mean, I haven't told you how to keep the waves bouncing, I, I just, I, I just, I think I just told it to you to actively try to make the waves bouncing. And the way you keep the waves bouncing is pretty simple. You simply remnant the range creep as fast as possible. Copy that. Right now you have every single laning advantage you can 
think of. Because you have the battle, you have full HP, you have mm, half of your mana. Sniper has nothing. Half HP, a little bit of tangos. And, and, and it's, it is these moments you should recognize where you have advantage over the opposing laner. Now instead of second point in overload, you could have taken Vortex and simply from level 3 played extremely aggressively and Sniper this sniper in this match wouldn't simply know how to respond because all we have observed so far is him being extremely passive. Well, well, you said at the start that you would like to just focus on your farming and try to get the orchid in time. The, my my advice for the lower MR players would be if if you spot the opponent being as passive, as long as you're the one being aggressive, you you have way better chances of winning the lane, not by simply out farming the opponent, but simply by by out trading the opponent. Now let me explain why. If you just passively farm. Yes, your net worth will be higher, but if you try to play this lane aggressively, your net worth will be a little bit lower because you're not uh, you're not utilizing jungle creeps as much. But along with that, your opponent's net worth will be massively lower, and in the end, if you look at the space scale, as long as you're up on the scale. The opponent is down on the scale. Now, I did say specifically for lower MMRs where players are passive, because the higher you go, if you try to play aggressive and the enemy simply starts healing up or rotations happen, in that case, every economy point you spend on being aggressive, if the enemy shuts it down, it's lost, it's irrecoverable, and then you have to fall back to the previous playstyle, which is jungle, but at the lower MMRs, the lower you go, the less chances there are that the opponent will know how to respond to aggression. So to summarize my extra long sentence, 99% of the matchups, if you see the opponent being passive, just play aggressive. Forget about farming, forget about class hidden, just focus on keeping the opponent low at all times. And what will happen is they will either feed you the kills or they will stay low health and allow you to take these last hits unhindered. Whew, there we go. Did that make sense? Yeah, it make it makes perfect sense. Cool. Like, uh, I'm gonna tell you a li little story. When I first started out in... No, when I first discovered Storm, I think I was at... I was 3k MMR or something. I, I didn't know shit about jungling, about economy, about good rotations. All, all I knew is that I, I liked to kill people. That was fun for me. So every single lane I went to, I simply traded with the opponents. And I have won most of my matchups without understanding why. Now once I have climbed to 4k and once the opponents well, became wiser, wisened up to my tactics, when they started bringing in more regions, playing more aggressively themselves, uh, making rotations with the supports, it, it was then that I have realized that just aggression alone isn't enough and I should be like more dynamic in my laning. But, but the point is that when I didn't know how to play Storm or how to play Dota in general, simply being aggressive has won me many matches without me necessarily being a good player. I see. Uh, I'll definitely try that in my next matches. Now, what I do in my games if I see a sniper it is what you said. I will try to get my farm. I will try to pay passively. 
because uh, if I get to level 6 safely, then, then it's a kill lane, I can kill him. But you, in this game, against this sniper, you can absolutely change that uh, game pattern into simply treating sniper as a kill lane from level 1. Because, you know, he has no region, no positioning, no game plan. Now, if you do want to play this as a farm lane, just remember this, that the small camp is always worth more when stacked, so try to stack as much as possible. Oh, did you realize creeps were coming? Yeah, I, I was. I had my boots, I thought I'll probably make a quick trip to the fountain and TP back, uh, but... Sniper probably pushed faster with his shrapnel. Yeah, with this strategy, teleporting or moving to the base, you always gotta keep in mind the opponent's wave clear capabilities. And, and also the timer, because uh, with the sniper being this passive, there is very little chance he will take the rune from you, so there, was, there wasn't really any point that you walk back to the base. Now one thing you can do in this scenario when you have a power rune is to push out the wave extremely fast and then fortify the creeps and go for the kill. The tower will most likely keep hitting those creeps and you have haste, you have vortex, most likely the sniper would die. And yeah, you're level 6 now, anytime Sniper shows up, just sip, sip him. Not necessarily to make a kill, but you do the water combo at least. And what, what, what will end up happening is he will lose half of his HP. He still has no region. Nice. He, still, he, will, he would lose half of his HP and what would happen from that point on is he would stay in the lane and you will kill him with the next water combo or he will be forced back to the base, in which case he's not farming. Both outcomes are beneficial for you. Storm versus Sniper, Storm versus Zeus, Storm versus any other opponent that was passive or fed. These matchups, once you reach level 6, make it a kill lane. Like, you don't need Orchid to make plays in this matchup. You just need to jump sniper. Yeah. You don't need Orchid to kill the sniper, you don't need Bloodstone to kill the sniper, you, you can build three desolators for all I care, sniper is dead anyway. And always, always send yourself out some vision with our items. Vision and clarity, that those are two most important items in the mid lane. Yeah, I, I, I do have a habit, so I already have a clarity and like I try to see if a ward is available, but uh, like 9 out of 10 times uh, they are always out of stock. One clarity isn't enough if you're not always conscious of your Clarity stock. Aim to have two or three. That's the better way. Those are cheap, not gonna hinder your item collecting capabilities. And you will always have them when you need them. There we go. It's as simple as that. You don't even need a rune. Just go and kill him anytime she he shows on the lane. Okay, so 
We have spent the last 5 minutes talking about how easy it is to kill Sniper. And in, th in that case, your game plan should be always to kill Sniper. I mean, this guy is not thinking. A Storm just effortless or effortlessly killed him, and what does he do? He teleports back to the mid lane. Under the tower, with your creeps hitting on him. And you, instead of repeating the same thing, when you have, when you even have the rune, you don't even need to have the rune, but you have the rune. Instead of killing him again, you, you go to jungle. Against skill lanes, your priority is kills. You only stop killing if the opponent is deep inside his jungle and it's dangerous to go there. Or supports begin rotating middle, and that would make you waste too many resources trying to kill the enemy mid. But this sniper. Anytime he shows, he's dead. So for this matchup and for other matchups, if the enemy is oblivious, why you have just killed them, and they keep showing up to be killed again, then grant their wish, kill them again. Farming should be more of your game plan at the higher MMR games, at the lower MMR games. Killing could most likely be your bread and butter. Okay. Like, any moment Sniper pops out on the minimap, or on their vision. If you jump, you make that kill. So you shouldn't play as passively. And like I said, even if you don't make that kill, you will wound him into force into seeking shelter or staying half HP and killing him later. Instead, what I'm seeing, you're playing this lane as if Sniper has a Doom spell for his ultimate. I, I think I was uh, fixated on getting Orchid. Yeah, that's the thing, you don't need Orchid for killing Sniper. You do need Orchid to kill Queen of Pain, Skywrath, Lena. Sniper, yeah. no. Sniper, no. You need nothing, you just need your spells. I mean, this is a 10 minute Orchid, a very nice timing, I'll give you that, but uh, just bear with me on this. If you would have focused on killing Sniper, if you would look at the net worth uh, scale right now, right now you have 5k net worth. If you would have focused on killing Sniper, then you would have a little bit less net worth, because less jungle creeps. I would say you would have like 4.5 K network, so that's about 500 less than you have now. But if you would think how much Sniper would lose from constantly dying and having no items, he would be at least 1.5k lower than he is right now. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah. And and if you again think of it like a on a scale wise, that's a lot of swing for your team if you keep killing a hero that you can keep killing. Especially if the hero does not depend on you having Orchid to be killed. <laughs> 